Tonight on ESPN, we continue with live coverage from Los Angeles, California, from the Sheraton Ballroom in New York City, from the ESPN Sports Center, and also from Lord Jim's in Hawthorne, New Jersey, where Leandro Riley is on hand with Tommy Vigorito. The Dolphins are next up. Let's hear about that pick. I'm back with Tommy Vigorito here at Lord Jim's in Hawthorne, New Jersey, and he's with the Miami Dolphins, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Why don't you give us a scouting report? This is an inside report on the Miami Dolphins. Well, I think uh, our biggest asset is the fact that uh, if you take uh, Kucherberg and Vernon Hurd out of our lineup, we are the youngest team in the NFL. And uh, having the experience of going to the Super Bowl last year and everybody coming back this year and being so young, you know, we got nowhere to go but up. And hopefully that's what will happen next year. We'll win it. All right, I don't think I can ask you how can you get experience in the draft. These guys are younger than you are. But what should the Dolphins go for in this draft? I think... Uh, the fact that we brought Vern out of retirement last year, uh, they're not going to want to do that again because he said he's refused to come off his farm again this year. So uh, I think we're going to go after defense alignment if there's uh, any quality defense alignment around at the time. And if we don't get a defense alignment, we'll probably go to the defensive secondary for help. Those are probably our two most important factors where we need uh, more backup help right now than we do starters. All right, thank you very much, Tommy Vigorito. Comments on the defense for the Dolphins. Gentlemen? All right, so a good look at what Miami might be doing. They, in effect, though, will have uh, two number one selections because they, uh, David Overstreet has come back from Canada, leaving the debacle of the Montreal Alouettes. So, in essence, with Overstreet coming to camp this August, this July, uh, they'll have two number ones. Right. <laughs> and uh, you, can't, you can't quibble with something like that because Pittsburgh will be in the same situation with Keith Gary having come back from Canada at the same time. I would guess what Vigorito said is very accurate. All righty, and, and plus, you look at Miami over the years, having had four different player personnel men, yeah, Don Shula, uh, the Rock of Gibraltar, uh, more than a coach, uh, just about club president when you, when you think about it. Well, the best coach around, really, uh, and I'm sorry to several of the other good ones around, but Shula's the best. I, I think that if we're to believe what Vigorito says, and of course, uh, it's not like Don called up Tommy this morning and told him what to say. Uh, Mike Charles of Syracuse may be a, a good guess here. Uh, perhaps a cornerback, but I, I think the guys that might have been around for the first round picks are gone. A, a sleeper. In the cornerback area, Daryl Green, Texas A&I, if they want a burner. But Miami's starting defensive backfield is pretty strong. Right, what about John Tice? Need for a tight end out of Maryland. We're talking about that before the uh, Dolphins. Their selection in New York City. They will be making selection number 27 with Washington to follow as we conclude round one. But the Dolphins about to make it, uh, their selection right now. First round selection. The Dolphins select quarterback Dan Marino of Pittsburgh. Next up, the Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins. That was Commissioner Pete Rosell just uh, about a minute and a half ago as he made the selection announcement for the selection of Danny Marino. I don't understand so, it. Uh, I don't, number one, I don't know who is going to work with him down there. Uh, who is, where is the great quarterback coaching genius on the offense? I know Orange Parker is a great defensive coach. I don't see where he's going to get this great coaching that's going to overcome the problems he's had. I mean, strictly a long-range projection down the line, and I think they need help in other directions. Maybe they felt that what they wanted wasn't there, and they couldn't get that help, but I really don't understand. You that. wouldn't label him as a classic Don Shula kind of quarterback, either. No, no that, that's true. Uh, but again, they got to the Super Bowl with a, with a David Woodley at quarterback, and they must figure that they can certainly, if they can get it out of David Woodley, you got to figure they think they can get it out of uh, out of Dan Marino. Well, I don't know what is a classic Shula quarterback. There's only been he's only had one really great quarterback, and that's Brees. Now Miami picking right after the Raiders, the next to last pick in the first round went for Dan Marino. Marino's stock had dropped precipitously with Pittsburgh season this past year and a very poor senior year. What his mental attitude will be going into the Miami camp may be more important than what his physical attributes are. I would hope and believe that Dan will calm down considerably. Uh, he was considered at the start of the year perhaps the best college quarterback. Uh, people talking about Heisman for him in spite of Herschel Walker. Uh, he's got all of the physical tools. Uh, as a junior, he played a magnificent Sugar Bowl game. He's proven that he's got the ability, and as you say, it's, it's mainly mental, but I think that 
the coaching he will receive and the calmness of his development, uh, he'll make it. He threw 37 touchdown passes as a junior, but he threw 23 interceptions that year, 22 interceptions this past year. In fact, more interceptions, five more interceptions than touchdowns as a senior. Uh, the Sugar Bowl MVP from 81, but going next to last in the first round and a 3-5 on a read. That is uh, one of the lower scouting numbers we've seen in this first round. Well, that's because of all the interceptions yep. that he threw. That is uh, for sure. He is the pocket-type passer. Uh, Don Strock will not be around forever. Uh, uh, David Woodley is the different type of quarterback, probably, that is more mobile out there. But Marino with the long downfield arm, maybe they hope that with a little guidance, uh, Paul brings up a point, gee, who's going to give him the guidance down there? I'm not sure. But if he settles down, that he can be the Strock type passer, and they would still have, but well, you can't call it Wood Strock anymore. I, I will have to think <laughs> up a, a name in the next hour or six. But uh, it gives him the different look at quarterback. So. Miami did say they would be looking at a quarterback if one of those guys was around, and it shows that my sources weren't kidding when they hmm. told me that, because only one of them was left, and they took the one that was left, Marino.